Parashat Veishlach. We normally think of winners versus losers as two opposites. Your team wins the final game, you jump on the winner's wagon, and the others remain to lick the wounds. Your joy is complete, and so is their disappointment. But outside of sports, winning and losing are more often two ends of a spectrum rather than a binary. Of course, it's always better to be on the winner's side, but after the rush of victory dissipates, we often notice a bitter aftertaste. For example, we win a war. We are exhilarated until the carnage and destruction all around us bring us back to a somber reality. In our Torah portion, Jacob decides to return home after 20 years in exile. Even though he has not heard from his brother Esau all the time, he was not sure that Esau abandoned his homicidal threat. As Jacob approached the land of Canaan, he sent some people to gather intelligence, and they came back with a rather ominous report. Quote, We went to your brother Esau, and now he's coming to meet you, and 400 men are with him. End quote. These men were not on their way back from a Buddhist retreat. They were tough and potentially violent. It is not surprising that the story continues telling us that, quote, Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. End quote. Almost a millennia ago, Rashi asked the obvious question. Why did the Torah, that tends to avoid repetitions, use similar descriptions, afraid and distressed? His answer is remarkable. Rashi suggests that Jacob was afraid that he might get killed, and he was distressed that, against all odds, he will end up killing his brother. Winning a fight between brothers cannot result in happiness. Even the winner suffers a great loss. There are some conflicts and battles in life that we have a good chance of winning, but the joy of victory will soon turn into distress. The best way would be to de-escalate the tension before it gets out of hand and everyone will experience different degrees of loss. Shabbat Shalom.